maybe the last uh, thing before we do questions is just can't say thanks enough to everybody here and all of your teams. <clears throat> extraordinary, extraordinary privilege to uh, be in the NEMA headquarters and then see year one from extraordinary challenges last winter to fires to today, just how everybody steps up and gets the job done. And uh, no matter what the set of circumstances are, and um, so it's uh, uh, can't uh, say thanks enough. And then, on top of uh, what's taken place in all of our communities with uh, fire departments, with emergency medical personnel, servants that uh, are there answering the call as well. So, Nebraskans helping Nebraskans, the staple of our state, uh, and uh, we uh, we uh, are going to have. Uh, a number of days ahead to uh, really uh, take it to, to a top level. So can't thank everybody enough. <clears throat> we have a lot of work ahead. Uh, and uh, obviously, can't keep saying it enough, urging Nebraskans to stay home for a number of days. Uh, you know, you, you might be in the center of a community where in a town and, uh, and sheltered from the wind and say, you know, it's not so bad. Trust me, when you just get outside in the open, it's extraordinary and it's bone chilling cold. And it's very, very dangerous. And I think, uh, I think yesterday uh, I heard that uh, it's been, uh, it's been uh, 50 years. 1974 was uh, the coldest of a 33 degree below zero day. Uh, with the wind chill, it's, it's way worse than that. So uh, we have uh, very dangerous conditions and uh, can't thank everybody enough. So I think we'll open it up for questions. Uh, appreciate all the press being here and helping us get the word out because uh, you're your presence and your communication will help save lives and help us uh, get our uh, uh, make sure our economy doesn't take a step back that uh, we can uh, get our businesses moving and getting our uh, number one industry back on its feet as quick as possible. Questions? Martha? Yeah, Colonel Boldick, thank you. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, right now, it's basically what I previously reported, unless Sergeant Jones, you have anything uh, emergent. Uh, basically, we're trying to move uh, Department of Transportation uh, blower units there, giant snow blowers, because uh, even plows can't get through the giant drifts. Uh, we are in communication with those folks. Our dispatchers have been on the phone with them. Uh, making sure that we're monitoring their health. They're fine. Unfortunately, they're running out of gas. So, uh, you know, staying warm obviously is going to be a big problem. Uh, but again, we're confident that we're going to get the right resources to those folks in the next uh, hour or so. Uh, but again, that same situation is being uh, uh, repeated in many locations where folks are stuck, but they're fine. Uh, they're going to stay stuck until we can get the roads cleared. Um, and uh, again, it just reiterates the point. Travel is not advised uh, in eastern Nebraska right now. Thank you. How, how prepared were they? I mean, did they? What did they have with them? Did they have food with them? Did they have food with them? Thanks for the question. You know, uh, yeah, that's great. You know, winter travel, you have to be prepared. These folks were uh, somewhat prepared. They had enough fuel to last uh, over a dozen hours uh, being stuck, so that's good. Um, they did have some food and water, but there's a limit to that. Um, they're, again, right now in good health, uh, but that could change if, uh, if, the, if they're unable to stay warm in these very frigid temperatures. So, uh, again, the best way to handle this is just stay home. If you must travel throughout the winter, you have to be prepared, have warm clothing, food, water, enough fuel, uh, a charged cell phone or a cell phone charger, so that in the event you become stranded, you can reach out for help. Uh, I'm confident this will have a uh, positive outcome, but it's going to take a lot of effort and it's going to take resources. And two people? There are two people, an adult and a juvenile uh, is our understanding. And again, they're in good health at this moment and uh, we are doing everything we can to make sure that that outcome stays the same. Other questions? Andrew. Governor, what have you heard about the, the power grid, the power situation? Have you had any yeah. Uh, so uh, we've been in communication with uh, the public power districts, and so the power right now is uh, all very adequate. We did an executive order 
yesterday or the day before, I lose track of time, uh, making sure that uh, we could have uh, uh, over the road uh, tankers be moving uh, longer hours so that we could make sure that there's plenty of fuel. Uh, so just as of a couple hours ago, uh, uh, everything's real good. The other is uh, water flow in, uh, in our river. <clears throat> and uh, you know, we've had meetings with the Corps. Uh, the Corps of Engineers done a great job of a impre increase in flow of water to make sure we have enough water uh, with, in regard to ice jams. So uh, every, every uh, potential concern is being addressed on a proactive basis. Um, couldn't uh, give enough shout out to uh, the Corps of Engineers of their openness and uh, working hand in hand. So I think in terms of the power right now, everything's real good. Uh, there, there could be a possibility that there'll have to be some 45 minute to hour uh, outages if this continues in this bone chilling cold. Uh, during the night, <clears throat> so I think that uh, the plan is real, real good. Where uh, we'll we'll be in good shape. Martha. Oh, declaring, declaring the emergency. What does that allow you to do that you would not be able to do otherwise, or what? What are you hoping that will work? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll let uh, number one. It's resources, and I'll let Irv talk to the specifics about it. Uh, really important, and we state number one, Martha, when you s declare a state of emergency, that it's really serious. This is a crippling storm and event, and that uh, that uh, tells all Nebraskans, number one, stay home, and that uh, all business people know that we're doing everything we can, and I'll let uh, Irv talk into the specifics of it. Thank you. <clears throat> Martha, with the, uh, with, with the declaration, it, uh, what we will do, or what we have done, is messaged other counties, uh, do they have equipment compatible with Department of Transportation's needs, and can we move, those count, move that equipment, if it exists, um, within a reasonable timeline to assist DOT with clearing roads, assuming that we can get DOT uh, freed up from the life safety missions. The other thing is that, um, depending on how long this event goes, it would give us the, the, the authorization to uh, request assistance from other states if they have uh, equipment available. So, so we're in the needs assessment phase right now. The final thing it does is that if somebody else provides equipment to support DOT, then uh, opens up the governor's emergency fund to which we can reimburse those who've provided that assistance. that answer your question, Martha? Okay. At, at this point in time, do you, do you at all foresee us asking for any assistance from the federal government? The uh, question was, at this point in time, uh, do we uh, expect to uh, uh, ask for assistance from the federal government? We've had those conversations uh, right now today that uh, we, uh, we don't expect that. Uh, probably the coolest part is We'll be, if we need to, we'll be talking to our neighbors, other states, asking for help. Uh, but uh, at this stage of the game, we don't expect to be asking the federal government for resources. Any, any other questions? Any other questions? This is Deb Pelker from Polk County Emergency Management. I do have a question, please. Please. Um, yes, um, I'm just trying to clarify. So if a county needs to look to outside resources within our area to help with these uh, measures, opening roads and such. Will that free up funds? To, I don't know if it would be from the governor's fund or elsewhere, but will that free up funds to um, allow us financial assistance to do that? And are you talking state roads or county roads when we talk about this extra assistance? Well, if the first step is uh, please submit your ISR to, to the NEMA Watch Center. We'll evaluate the request. The intent here is to, to uh, first, first, free up the uh, DOT equipment so that they can open up the, the 1,700 miles of the state roads that are already closed, keep them open, and then provide assistance through DOT to counties to, to get, uh, get those roads open so, um, so producers uh, can, uh, can access their, uh, their operations. Thank you. 
And, and maybe the other piece I'll add to it would certainly be that uh, the way, obviously, the state roads and the county main thoroughfares, but obviously a lot of us understand what township roads are, and less frequently traveled roads, and uh, you know how it how it how it's worked forever is uh, Nebraska's farmers, ranchers just go out and clear the roads and dig it out, and that's how it works. But this one is so overwhelming. Countless people are reaching out and saying, we, we, can't, we can't do it anymore. We've been trying since Monday, and we're exhausted, and uh, we're, we're, uh, you know, our drifts are over our tractors, and we can't even, get, we can't even dig into them. So uh, we're going we're gonna to need some extraordinary help uh, across uh, uh, the rural roads uh, that, uh, because uh, they're, they're beyond what uh, anybody's experienced in our lifetimes. Andrew. Please. Yeah, could, could you just kind of um, explain to people what, what all those, what, what, what are the colors on the map? Sure, so, so what you're seeing on the map right now is our current closure map. So you can see we've referenced that Highway 281 north-south several times. You can see it's just almost a, a direct line running down that highway. So you can see the total number of closures. And this is a real-time map that's available on 511. So if anybody is trying to, and hopefully in the near days, not today, not today traveling, but in the coming days, if they want to check what's been open in real time, they can reference back to 511. They can also go to, at the same 511 landing page, they can go to Plow Tracker and get a pretty good uh, screenshot from our trucks that have cameras on them on what those roads look like. So you can click on the truck. Um, and just a shout out to our Plow Tracker namers. Some of our third graders have named our trucks. So you can get a kick out of that. So spend your time checking out the roads. Please don't drive them. The extra with the wet weather we had on Monday with that snow in Omaha, especially because it's wet snow, and with the dry, cold, extreme temperatures, is that extra challenges right now, but also for cleanup later on? Absolutely. I think we got most of the ice off the roads in the days between the two storms. The, the demographics of the storms were also a bit different. And so this one is mostly impacting northeast Nebraska and, and not the interstate area. So there is definitely some overlap. But in terms of just the road, we're, we were pretty clear through the Wednesday piece where I see the biggest impact is in our personnel. Keep in mind the same people that were plowing roads Monday and Tuesday are plowing roads through the weekend. So making sure that we keep those drivers behind the, the plows safe, uh, that, that's the number one priority. You, you must be a farm boy because you recognize how challenging it is. And that's, that's what's really creating an incredible challenge for the rural county roads, the township roads, with that heavy snow, ice freezing up and then blowing and then uh, can't break into it and then get another foot on top of it. So that those are some of the circumstances that has made it extraordinarily difficult for families living in rural, in rural communities and then of course all livestock producers. Martha. Can you talk about how staffing looks? There, I know that the state was uh, having experiencing a shortage of people to, to uh, work on the roads previously, so how well, do things look now? Yeah, Martha's question is about how staffing, there's, there's no question, Martha, everybody's wore out. Uh, people have been working uh, since Monday, and uh, uh, we've uh, got a lot of people that are pulling it together and, and uh, doing the best they can and operate safely. And Vicki, in terms of Department of Transportation folks, the, You've got 350 plows out, you could address that. Thanks for the question, Martha. With the governor's help last year, we were able to secure some increases in wages for our maintenance staff. And so that has helped quite a bit with filling our team. I've personally laid eyes on our maintenance staff, anyone who's joined us in the last year and talked with our uh, district operations managers. We are in such a better place than we were last year in filling those roles. So I thank the governor for his support there and being able to bring in some t some people to be able to fill those those holes. So we're in a much better place with personnel. It's just that this is sustained operations and 24-hour operations. Okay, well maybe I'll just finish it up. Thank you everybody. Appreciate all the press being here helping us get the word out. We're grateful for that. Can't, uh, can't say enough. Uh, I, Thanks to all of the directors and their teams. Um, I will tell you that I wish that every Nebraskan could see from my seat what I've experienced of the extraordinary work of our public servants across the state, just stepping up and doing what it takes and Nebraskans helping each other. The best thing we can do right now is stay home 
and stay in your house. And once the wind stops blowing, then we can go out and we can start helping neighbors and we can uh, make sure that uh, we get uh, back to normal as quick as possible. So uh, thank you all for being here. We're very grateful. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you.